get mad at makeup brands for all kinds of reasons. And this week, e.l.f. was under fire for a makeup collab with a very popular influencer. If you do not know her, her name is Michaela Naguera, and she collaborated with e.l.f. Cosmetics on a lip kit that was specifically designed for her wedding. There are people that are questioning this collab in many ways. I'm going to talk to you about all of the problems that people have with this collaboration in just a moment. We also have the update on Makeup Revolution and the coup, the big coup happening behind the scenes over there with Boohoo trying to replace the board with their own people because they own a significant amount of stock in the company. It did not go the way that I expected. Like this was not on like my list of choices of how this could go. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely nuts. And then... Companies are always trying to get in our space, in our makeup space, because they know that there is money to be had here. But this is probably one of the weirdest ways I have ever seen a non-makeup company try to break into our space. It's super, super odd and <laughs> must not be doing too well because usually these things sell out pretty quickly. This one's still available. I have all of that for you and so much more, including the products that were released this week and all of the sales that are happening this weekend. So hang tight. We're about to jump into all of that right about now. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to What's Up in Makeup, where we talk about everything that is happening in the beauty space all in one place. But before we get into the top news of today, we need to take just a moment to thank this week's sponsor. This video is very kindly sponsored by Scentbird. If you do not know my love for Scentbird, I have been uh, getting Scentbird perfumes pretty much since the brand started. Let me show you. So if you did not believe me, this is full of scent birds from over the years in various states of use. <laughs> <laughs> that I've been collecting and I have so many that I love. I like to flip flop what I wear. I'm not a signature scent kind of person and Scentbird allows me to try luxury perfumes without having to invest in a full size bottle. If you haven't seen Scentbird in a while, they did change the packaging and I really love this change. The way that it works is there is a lock and unlock function. So right now it's locked. You spin to unlock it and that gives it room for this to push down and spray out the fragrance like that. And to switch out the fragrance, all you need to do is open that up and here is the fragrance inside. You can see it's a generous amount of perfume. It goes almost all the way to the top there and this is considered a 30 day supply of perfume. Semper sent over four new scents for me to try for the sponsorship. So I'm gonna quickly go over them for you. This is by Grace de Monaco and this is the Danse Etoile perfume. And and the notes on this are very floral with a little bit of lime in there. If you are a floral lover, this one is a nice, light, delicate, feminine floral without feeling like you're going in your grandma's closet. One thing I forgot to show you is they do send over a card with your monthly subscription that has a picture of the full-size bottle. So if you enjoy it, you know what the full-size bottle is going to look like. And it does give you the notes and a little description about your fragrance that you got. So this this one is Sanctuary's Red Panda, and I really love this one. The top note in this is bamboo, so it's got a really nice, fresh scent, but then it's got a little bit of fruitiness to it. There's some black currant in there that's also really strong. This is more of a fresh, fruity scent. It's really, really nice, a great light daytime scent. They also sent over Furla's Preciosa, and this one is more for a, like an evening scent for me. It's more vanilla, it's more warm. It's got pink pepper in it, uh, but really what I smell the most is the vanilla and the warmth. It just reminds me of like sexy luxury. Like you go into a luxury store and you smell the woman that's walking by in her luxury garb and this is what she smells like. And then the final one they sent me is actually my favorite. I am in love with Confessions of a Rebel. They make some of my favorite perfumes of all time. This is one I hadn't tried yet. It's called Love High. The major scent that I smell in here is peaches, but there's also orange blossom in here. So it's peachy, but it's also floral. It's like nothing else that I own. And this is 
definitely my favorite. Scentbird has over 600 designer fragrances for you to try. It's only $17 a month. And again, you get a full 30 day supply of perfumes. So it's a great way to try a perfume over a long period of time before you really settle in on investing in that full size. So if you're interested in trying Scentbird, of course, Scentbird very kindly has given us a discount code and that discount discount code is going to give you 55% off of your first month of Scentbird. That'll make your first perfume, again, 30-day supply for only eight bucks. In order to get the discount, all you need to do is click the link down below or scan the QR code on your screen now and use my code, which is also on the screen now, and that will get you your 55% off of your first month. Thank you again so, so much to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. And now, my friend, it is time for what's up in makeup. So Michaela Naguera has a reputation. She has built this reputation as not really being very honest in her collaborations with companies. And this stemmed from people questioning whether she was disclosing ads for quite a long time, but then it all hit the fan when she did a sponsored video for L'Oreal for their telescopic lift mascara. It was so big, it was dubbed Mascaragate. <laughs> if you do not remember if you were not around for that. Essentially what happened, I'll show you the videos on the screen right now, is that Michaela did this ad for their new mascara. And somehow about halfway through the video, after she applied the mascara, she had lots more lashes than she did when she started. They weren't just longer or more full. She had more of them. And many people, including me, strongly believe that she applied false lashes to intensify the effect. And what is wrong with that, you may ask? It's deceptive, and it's false advertising, and it's cruddy. And the way that it was presented was as a makeup review and not a straight up commercial. And when you are an influencer who is reviewing makeup and that's what you do, it's not the same as when the ad for a brand plays on a television screen set before your favorite show. It's just different. So in response to this, Michaela had a lot of choices of how she wanted to handle it, and she decided to come back with this video. I'm sure we all know why we've all gathered here today. It's the month of love, bitches. Anyone who knows me knows I'm not around on Valentine's Day, okay? Like these, these eyeshadow looks are about the hit. And then after that, she didn't say anything. That was the end of it. It was over and she moved on. And it turns out, believe it or not, this was probably the best path for Michaela PR wise because her fans absolutely ate it up. They were calling her the unbothered queen and they were applauding her, not letting the haters get to her. And it's like, those of us that have been around in the space for a while, we're just like, like, okay, so this is where we are. Okay, all right. Uh, false advertising is fine now. All right, moving on. So long story short, way too late. There are a lot of people that don't really trust Michaela's reviews anymore after that. But rewinding just a little bit, before all of that went down, Michaela got engaged and she was set to get married and I think it was about a year and a half from when the engagement happened. Naturally, because Michaela posts a lot of the things about her life online, she wanted to post about her search for things that she was going to use and do on her wedding day. So anything from the perfume that she was going to wear to her dress, to her nails, to her hair, which was a whole mess in itself. I will link T-Spill's video down below. She did a fantastic job breaking down like the mess of her hair and all of the things that happened with that. And she was also talking about her lip combo. What lip liner and lipstick would be perfect for her wedding day? And she started sharing all of these different lip combos that she was trying out. What we didn't know at the time is that in July of last year, she was working with Elf to develop this lip combo for her wedding day. I am on the hunt for my perfect wedding lip combo and I have found another contender. I will find the perfect combo for my wedding. Is this f***ing real? This is so sweet. Bite Beauty made three custom lipsticks that I could potentially wear at my wedding. Listen to the names. Mrs. Michaela Hawken, Cody's wife, and the Hawkins established 2023. That is so freaking sweet. Thank you. But... Are they contenders for the wedding? 
Let's find out. And this is what I'm thinking happened. I have no proof of this, but this is what I'm thinking happened, is that if she had continued to post these, I'm searching for my perfect lip combo, and then all of a sudden it's like, I found it, it's with Elf, and I made it myself, then everybody would have known that the search for the perfect lip combo was 100% fake, and that she was just doing it to lead up to her releasing the collab with Elf, which is not a good look because you don't want to look like you've been lying the whole time about trying to find this lip when you already knew what the lip was going to be. Of course, through the announcement, there were people that were congratulating her and really excited about the collab, but there were a lot of negative comments, especially on subsequent posts after the announcement, especially on Elf socials, not as much on Michaela's. I'm not 100% sure why, but here are the, some of the things that people were saying. One person said she's not even going to wear this lipstick at her wedding, which I think, I don't know if I agree with that. Maybe I'm just being overly optimistic, but I feel like she's going to wear the lipstick at her wedding. I do. I genuinely do. But I think that that stems from her not being honest in the past and people not trusting her just in general. Beyond that, people were disappointed in Elf for working with her. They said things like, I'm so sad that y'all are working with Michaela. I just can't support a company that supports her. And so many comments along that exact same line of, I can't support you, Elf, because you support this dishonest person. So then here comes the big day. The lip kit is launched and I'm wondering, is it going to sell out? Of course it's sold out. According to Michaela, it sold out in 18 minutes and all of the hate that was going toward Elf. I can't believe you, I'm not interested in this. I can't believe you're working with Michaela. I can't believe you're doing this Elf. I'm never buying anything from you ever again. <sighs> like all that completely flips. Okay, and now all the comments are all about your website's crashing and I tried to get it and I couldn't get it. I hope that you're playing on restocking. It's not fair that I couldn't get it. It's so, it's nuts how people just flip like that. And maybe they're probably just different people. You've got Michaela fans and you've got Michaela haters. And at first they were pissing off the Michaela haters and now they're piss pissing off the Michaela fans. And they just, Elf is just pissing off everybody, except for the people that were able to acquire the lipstick in those 18 minutes or people who didn't even try to get it, which was me. So, so much for a mass boycott of Elf. Uh, you know, they ordered a lot. They had to have ordered a lot. And for them to sell out that fast, it just shows that influencer marketing is going absolutely nowhere. Y'all, I was so, so interested to see what was going to happen this week with Makeup Revolution because you know I think business news is just absolutely fascinating and like what's happening behind closed doors. Like what is going on? Oh my gosh, this was a freaking mess. So last week we talked about Makeup Revolution and how there is a big mess happening over at it behind the scenes with their board members and their shareholders and it's Woo! Let me just rewind a little bit because I'm getting too excited. Okay, so the original CEO founder of Makeup Revolution, his name was Adam Minto. He was like either booted out or he just left because he was doing some shady business and now he's being sued by Makeup Revolution because because of his shady business, they ended up getting removed from the British Stock Exchange and the company lost a ton of money. It was a huge mess because he couldn't report the finances because he was doing so much shady business. Beyond that, Tom Allsworth, who was the president, he he had had Makeup Revolution buy a company that he owned for like millions and millions of pounds and supposedly he had overvalued that company so that he could pocket the money. So he was doing shady business too and then he ended up leaving what like a month ago something like that. So both of them were out and they ended up the rest of the Makeup Revolution people ended up hiring a couple of people to take their place. But then gets really messy because Boohoo, who is a fast fashion company out of Britain, they own 26.6% of the stock for Makeup Revolution. So they got a lot of power having that much, right? They decided that they didn't want all the people that were running the place, uh, Bob Holt and Derek Zisman, he's the HelloFresh guy, and Elizabeth Like, they didn't want them to be at the top. They wanted their own people to be at the top. So they were like, hey, let's stage a coup. We're gonna have a vote by the shareholders and we're gonna boot these people out. We're gonna put our own people in. It's gonna be awesome. That happened last week. Let me just say, it was not awesome. 
This is what actually happened. They have their vote, right, of the shareholders, and they vote to kick out Bob and Derek and Elizabeth. They're like, yeah, we won, woohoo, woohoo, woohoo. But then, what's the dude's name? His name is Jeremy Schwartz. He's the independent director. He was like, nope. And I don't know if he hit like a nope button or something. No. But he reinstated. Like, he was like, no, we're not doing that. And he reinstated Bob and, and Elizabeth and uh, Derek. He reinstated them and was like, no, we're not doing that. And the reason why is because the vote wasn't exactly fair. These are the numbers on it. So they said that 75% of the shareholders had voted to kick out the people and install the Boohoo people, right? But only 39% of the shareholders even voted. And remember, Boohoo owns 26.6% of the shares. So that doesn't leave a lot. And they also said that the highest number of votes against any proposal was 29%. So that's less than 3% of non-Boohoo people voted to get rid of them. <laughs> So, that, so the guy that's like the independent dude, he's like, no, that's ridiculous. Absolutely not. We are not installing your people. In a statement, Revolution said, Boohoo have provided no detailed rationale for their hostile approach, nor have they set out any strategy and future plans for the company if it were to gain board control. Honestly, this is what I think. I think Boohoo sees how much money Makeup Revolution could make. I mean, they are spread out so far as far as the number of countries that they're in, the number of retailers they're in. I don't know about the UK, but I know they're all over the place in the US. I know that they are at a pretty affordable price point, which makes a huge difference. They have a huge social media platform. There's a lot of potential in Makeup Revolution. And anybody that's in charge is going to make a lot of money. And I think that's why they're fighting for those board positions, why their people are fighting for the board positions. This is evidence of that. So along with all of this happening, Mega Revolution was now reinstated to the British Stock Exchange and they had a very, very good start. So they were just reinstated on Wednesday and the shares soared as much as 54% at one point. Now, the people who were in charge, the Derek and Bob and Elizabeth, were promised these share, these stock bonuses if they were able to improve the status of the company. Since they were able to do that, they just got a ton of money in stocks. They got over 11 million shares split between them, which is nearly $3.8 million based on the company's current share price. So I get why Boohoo's trying to get in there and get that sweet revolution money, but it looks like that failed and it failed miserably. Now, Boohoo is not giving up. They're talking about coming back to the board in July or August to try to do this again with more of the shareholders chiming in. Uh, I will keep my eye out for it, but I imagine that this is not going to go well for Boohoo. We shall see. I know that you have been waiting with bated breath for the KKW fragrance and makeup to come back because you are a huge Kim Kardashian fan, said most of my audience, never. Because a lot of you all do not like her and you express that to me every time I put her in the thumbnail. <laughs> Y'all do not like this woman. I think she's fine. I'm kind of this way, that way with Kim Kardashian. I don't really have strong feelings. I'm gonna be 100% with you. I don't have strong feelings. But if you do, here's the tea of what happened this week. So she announced that she is going to bring back the KKW Beauty and the KKW fragrance, but it's not gonna be KKW anymore. It's gonna be under the skin name, the SKKN name, which we had talked about forever ago because that's the trademarks that she owns for beauty. So it makes perfect sense that that's where she'd throw it. The two brands have been shut down since May of 2022. It was right around the same time that she split with Kanye and people were thinking that it was probably because she didn't want the W on the end of her name anymore because the West was gonna be gone. So why it does, didn't even make sense to her for her brand. But Kim has been tweeting lately and talking about the rebrand of her makeup and her fragrances. She said, when someone asked if it was coming back, she said, this year it's coming all your faves. And then she clarified, 
she said, anything that is applied to the skin or helps to accentuate your skin will be under the skin brand. I wanted there to be one site where you guys can get it all, not go to three places for beauty products. And she also mentioned that there's going to be some new fragrances under skin. So if you are a Kim fan, I am excited for you. Hopefully everything she comes out with is going to be amazing. I will keep my eye on it whenever the things launch. I will be sure to let you know. Do you remember when Buffalo Wing scented lip glosses and cheese scented nail polish was just an April Fool's joke and it wasn't real? Like, do you remember when Outback Steakhouse was talking about these steak flavored lipsticks and it was a joke? Like, and then companies started like actually making the shit, like, <laughs> and putting it out. There was the Elon Musk burnt hair fragrance. There was the ranch scented soap. I mean, there's just been so many of these really freaking weird collabs. A couple weeks ago, we had the one with Instacart coming out with a fragrance that was supposed to smell like the grocery store. I mean, it's just weird. And the newest one is from Kraft, but they're kind of like dipping their toe in and not really like doing all the things. It's super weird. Let me share with you. So it is a new product from them that they are promoting. It is their buffalo flavored sauce. And it is a kit that you can buy where you get a full size sauce and then they give you a little empty lip gloss tube where you can just squeeze the sauce in there and then that's your your applicator like to like put it on your fries or whatever on the go it's so weird like they don't even suggest that you put it on your lips even though it's in a lip balm tube like it's clearly a lip balm tube there it's just for like having sauce on the go which i think is weird because right now it's summer and i don't want mayonnaise like sitting in my 100 degree car like that's disgusting <laughs> can you imagine that like I know it's shelf stable, but still that's kind of gross. A craft rep told Muse by Clio, which is an online magazine, they said the Buffalo Balm Kit was inspired by the thousands of people who proudly professed to carrying buffalo sauce in their bags. Through research, we found that 69% of people already carried a lip balm tube in their bags, so we thought, what better way to provide mayo freaks a way to get their fix of flavor anytime, anywhere? It packs easily, flavors quickly, and stands out unapologetically. <laughs> That's so weird. So if you want this, when I sat down to film, this was still available on Amazon, 15 bucks. The bottle itself, if you go to Walmart, it's five bucks just for the sauce. So you're paying an extra $10 for an empty lip gloss tube and a display box. Like who, like I, see, this is the thing. I can't judge because I bought that dumb mischief lip gloss or ketchup thing that was like a collaboration with Fenty Beauty where you got the little mini packets of like, it was like, it was like a game. But this isn't a game. It's not even fun. It's just a, an empty lip gloss thing. You know, you can get six of those empty lip gloss things for five bucks on Amazon. Like this is, so, <laughs> it's such a gimmick. It's such a gimmick. And I don't know, like, uh, will you buy this? I'd be curious if, if a one of you is actually wanting to buy this. Not because, you know, I'm daring you to because I'm not, but wouldn't, is, does anybody want it? I would be shocked if any of you said you would. All right, my friend, let us get into the product report. Lots of stuff launched this week. Let's start with Isamea Beauty. And one thing I appreciate about them is they're really thinking outside the box with their packaging and stuff. Like they're doing things differently. They're the ones that do the penis lipsticks. They, they do things a little bit different and I just appreciate that. So it's expensive though. It's very expensive. So they have released this week the Lip Lack 2.0 Maximizing Lip Serum, $38. I believe there's three shades on that. The Industrial color pigments 2.0 eyeshadow palette it's $115 but look at the packaging the packaging is nuts uh, there's also a set of industrial earrings for $155 they, they are branded with the Isamaya Beauty like a stamp in there which I think is kind of cool but I just again I just appreciate they're doing things a little bit differently I think it's cool Laura Mercier is not doing things a little differently this looks very similar to like Charlotte Tilbury Elf came out with something similar like this is this is just more of the same thing Thing. But just from Laura Mercier, this is the Rose Glow Liquid Highlighter, three shades available, $40 each. I mean, it's pretty packaging, but is that really worth $40? Unless you're a huge Laura Mercier fan, like that's a lot. That's a lot. 
Popping over to some indie brands, lots of indie releases this week. We have the Wicked Sisters Wicked Summer Eyeshadow Palette. It is on their TikTok shop now, but it will launch on their website on July 4th at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. It is definitely a wild palette. It is, it is, it is a wicked summer wild, wild looking palette. <laughs> and then a brand that I hadn't heard of, but was all over my feed this week. We have the Gloss God Sky Collection Volume 2. The Color of Rain Effect Eyeshadow Palette and the Lavender Skies Remixed Eyeshadow Palette. The palettes are $43 each, or you can get a bundle of both for $77. Really, really pretty here. I'm not surprised that this is getting a lot of attention. Then we have from Copacetic Cosmetics, the Summer Collection Highlighters. There are five different colors available with really, really adorable paw print packaging. You can have a full size or a mini. The full size is $15 and the mini is $10. Moving over to Clarity Cosmetics, the Croc Mini Palette is coming soon. And I was like, that is a huge mini palette. Like, I wonder what the full size looks like. If that's the mini, this is a video from a YouTuber named Beauty in the Frizz, and she did a full review of of the main palette. And one of the things that she said in there is that she wished that it was smaller because she was never going to go through all of that eyeshadow. It was just never going to happen. The pans are just too big. Uh, and it sounds like there were a lot of people asking for that because they did create the mini palette for it. I couldn't find the price on this, uh, but if I find it before this video goes up, I'll put it on the screen for you. They also just launched a 13 brush set for $60. They're individual brushes. You can get them $4 to $6.50 each. This is absolutely adorable. When I went to film last week, Shroud Cosmetics was about to announce this, but they hadn't announced it when I sat down to film. So this is it. It's the Peaches and Dreams palette. Along with the palette, they are launching some little acrylic earrings that are called Peach Milk Earrings. Is peach milk a thing? I have never heard of that. I've heard of strawberry milk before, but never peach milk. That's new to me. Is it good? If you've ever had peach milk, is that good? It doesn't, that's, very odd, uh, but they're releasing earrings anyway, whether it's real or not. They're releasing earrings. The swatches of this palette, oh my gosh, they look absolutely freaking incredible. Let's pop over to Sephora because there's been a little bit of discussion over these new Sephora collection liquid lipsticks and bullet lipsticks. A lot of people, including Trend Mood, uh, had a whole post about it where she was talking about how they look like dupes for Rare Beauty. And let's, ju let's just talk about it a little bit. So we have the Soft Matte and Easy Liquid Lipstick, $15, 10 shades. They say it's a vegan water-based formula that feels light and super, super comfortable on the lips. Buildable coverage with vibrant high impact color with a single swipe. And they say it does smell like vanilla. They also say that you can use it on your cheeks for a monochromatic look when you pair it with the lip. It does look very similar to the Rare Beauty one. So what I did for the liquid lipstick was I compared the two formulas and it looks like they are different, uh, but they both use silicones in the base to give that slip. But the big difference is that the Sephora one has water in the top and then they have the humectant butylene glycol in there. So that may be a little more hydrating on the lips than the Rare Beauty one. I'd be curious to see whether that actually comes to fruition in the performance of the product, but that would be my guess based on the formula. Now with the lipsticks, I didn't dig that deep. I meant to go back and do it and I just realized I didn't do it and I'm going on a date tonight and I don't have time to go back and redo it. But I will tell you about the matte liquid lipstick. <laughs> Just to tell you, the one that they're comparing it to the Rare Beauty one, it's $15 as well. You get 20 shades there. Again, vegan long-lasting lipstick with intense color and matte texture that won't crack, fade, or bleed. It's a blurring effect with an intensely pigmented look. I do really like the packaging. I like the bullet shape, the way that it's cut out like that. Very, very cute. Very, It's just a beautiful product for Sephora. An advantage that Sephora Collection has is that they have access to so much uh, data as far as what color customers are buying on their website and then they can create products to go along with those trends. They really have an advantage there and I think they've they've definitely done it with use that advantage creating these products. We've also been talking lately about shade ranges of different products and how a lot of times the deepest shade is ignored and why it's important for companies to specifically make things for people that need the deepest shade. And one of the products that's usually neglected for deeper skin is bronzers. And I was very excited to see this, so I wanted to share it. At Westman Atelier's Beauty Butter Matte Powder Bronzer has a new shade called Beau Soleil. It is 75 bucks though. 
which is a lot. Um, but it is a nice deep bronzer, which I don't normally see bronzers of this shade. Rare Beauty does have launches this week. They're not lip products. They're actually eye products, but they launched this week. We have the All of the Above Weightless Eyeshadow Stick, $22, six shades there. Perfect Strokes Longwear and Waterproof Gel Eyeliner, $19, three shades there. And then the Brow Harmony Precision Eyebrow Pencil, $19, six shades. Makes sense she's trying to flesh out her line, put in those products that she just had holes of, you know, things that she didn't have available. And Rare Beauty is really developing some brand loyalty, so it's smart to kind of extend in the number of products that she's offering. Coming soon, may be available now because there was no release date on Sephora's website, but if it's not there now, it's coming soon. The Huda Beauty One Coat Wow Extra Volumizing and Lifting Mascara, $23. They say mega curl, immediate length, and extra volume. From the brand photos, it looks really clumpy, which I don't hate. I don't mind a clumpy mascara because that means I'm going to get a lot of volume, which makes me very, very happy for my little short, wimpy lashes. Uh, but honestly, does this packaging look kind of drugstore to you? Because it looks really drugstore to me. For Huda Beauty, I don't know. It looks, looks kind of cheap. That's just my opinion. Also coming soon from Bobbi Brown, on July 14th, we have the Vitamin Enriched Pressed Setting Powder, $48. Shade range on this is absolutely atrocious, in my opinion. The four shades available, it's like, mm, but when you've got a powder, it can be a little more forgiving because it is sheer. But at the same time, it would have been nice to see two medium shades and two deeper shades the way that they did the two lighter shades, just saying. A little bit better though, we have the Vitamin Enriched Hydrating Skin Tint SPF 15 with Hyaluronic acid $46 each 18 shades there the gradient looks beautiful till you get to shades 12 13 and 14 where you got some like jumpy 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 happening there I really we'll see a, a really nice gradient later this one it's got a little a little mushy in there where I wish that there was a little bit less of a jump between shades it does look like though they have a very light shade and a very deep shade which is nice to see but again with light coverage this, this looks like a light coverage product it may be a little more forgiving as far as the shades that individual people can use may not have to be an exact color match because of the coverage. As far as the formula, they say it is a two-in-one buildable skin tint delivering 12-hour hydration while providing long-wearing natural looking coverage that's sweat-proof and humidity resistant. Moving over to Ulta, we have a shade extension for CoverGirl. We have the Clean Fresh Yummy Gloss with the Daylight Collection. It is $10.99 for one of these, and there are six shades to choose from. They say there are light, reflective nudes inspired by daylight. Not quite sure what that means, but... They, are, they exist, and I know that teenagers are all about these right now because my 15-year-old freaking loves these yummy glosses. <laughs> Two new brow products from Benefit. This is the Hubba Brow Brow Enhancing Serum. $58, and they say it improves the appearance of brow volume in just four weeks and shows fuller looking brows at 12 weeks. They say it is a clinically tested gentle formula that contains a custom blend of vitamins, plant extracts, and rice pr protein. It's suitable for sensitive skin and feels comfortable on the brows. You're supposed to apply it nightly on dry brows. And then along with that, there is the Woso Soft Conditioning Brow Oil for $22. It's a mixture of castor seed oil, apricot kernel oil, argan oil, and sunflower oil but the question for me is for any for anybody that wants to buy this is does your brow area need moisture if it does then I can see why this would be necessary but I don't really see from my non-scientific perspective why anybody would need a brow conditioner that doesn't need extra moisture unless your hair is brittle your skin is dry then I can see it so I don't know, I just feel like brands sometimes just create things to create things and this feels like that for me. Launching today over at Smashbox, this is the shade range I was telling you about. The Always On Skin Balancing Foundation with Hyaluronic Acid plus Adaptogens. Really beautiful gradient, check this out. 30 shades available. They say it's a long wearing foundation with skin balancing, oil control and hydration that supports skin instantly and over time. Buildable coverage for a visibly even natural look and 16 hour color true wear. Honestly, it looks really nice. I am rooting for Smashbox to come back. I hope that they do well. I know they took over some of the Becca products when Becca closed and I was just like, okay, Smashbox is gonna be next. Because I don't see a lot of people buying a lot of Smashbox. Like they're known for their primers, but that's like pretty much all I see them doing. They used to be known for their setting sprays, but I haven't seen them come out with setting sprays recently. So hopefully this foundation will be a hit for them. They're also releasing a concealer. It 
is called the Healthy Glow 4-in-1 Perfecting Pen Concealer with Hyaluronic Acid, $29 each, 26 shades. Again, beautiful gradient. They say it's got 24-hour wear, hydration, instant radiance, easily concealing, highlighting, contouring, and correcting. They say it withstands cake increasing and settling into fine lines. I hope all that's real. I hope it is because it really looks nice. I'm rooting for Smashbox. Go Smashbox! <laughs> All right, my friend, PR of the week. Uh, my husband didn't go to the studio and pick up the, where my PR is mailed to, so I don't have any PR that's new this week. So what I decided to do was really dip into the Smokin' Hot palette by ColourPop because this is pretty much the only thing I haven't used that's been sitting here and waiting for me to try out. So I used this on my eyes today and I was really hoping it wouldn't be so warm because warm tones do not look fabulous on me. So I picked the ones that weren't quite as warm and then quickly found out that yes, they are very warm. So I ended up with a pretty warm look but it's not super orangey it's not real orangey i used kind of a random selection of colors i honestly was popping around so much i didn't really keep track of what i have on my eye because i was just kind of all over the place but the glitter i have on my eyes is this shade here called gold dipped and it i'm telling you i put it on and then i was blending all my other stuff and the glitter just fell everywhere and i had to take it off the tape and reapply my foundation it was a hot freaking mess so if you're going to use this shade make sure you use it last because it just fell everywhere. It was a mess. And then what I decided to do, because you know I like using things for unintended purposes, I decided to use my Harry Styles Pleasing Gloss Medium and use this shade called What A Babe as my lipstick today. So that's what my lipstick is today. And I love it. I really, really love that. And then on my cheeks today, I use the shade Heat Wave. That's my blush. I use a little teeny tiny brush to like get it there and then I use the bigger more dense blush brush to kind of spread it all out because it is a little bit difficult to blend this is not a blush formula this eyeshadow formula it did not work great but I made it work I made it work I also used a little bit of the shade Sahara as my highlight today and I had a lot of fun with this because the shade selection really isn't meant for my skin tone I'm going to pass this along to my friend that it will look much more beautiful on her than me so if you like warm tones yes absolutely if you're not big on oranges and reds obviously it's it's called smoking hot. It's not made for us. I tried. I did my best. It's fine, but I know I'm not going to reach for it. So many notable sales this week. Oh my gosh. It's a lot. Buckle up. We have the Ulta Big Summer Beauty Sale going on now through July 15th, up to 50% off select items. Then we have the Sephora Summer Sale because they cannot be outdone by Ulta through July 4th. Again, deals up to 50% off. Skin Store, almost everything on the site is 25% off with code July 4, with the number 4, through July 4th. Fifth, Soco Glam, now through July 6th, 20% off site wide using code July 4TH. Number four, TH. Credo Beauty, 20% off of some of their fan favorites through July 4th. 13 Loon is 30% off select products through July 4th. Hopari is having a progressive sale that lasts until July 5th. $10 off purchases of $75 or more, $20 off purchases of $100 or more, or $35 off of purchases of $150 or more. Moving over to Beach Waver, which is how I get my curls every time I do my curls. It's very humid here. It's been raining, so it didn't really hold too well this time. But usually it does a really good job. I love my freaking Beach Waver. Beach Wavers are 40% off site-wide on July 4th. Pretties for Your Face is having a sale with lots of details. I'm not reading all that. It's too much. So I'm going to just put it on the screen and you can read it. And you can decide what you want because that's too much to read out loud. And it is going on until July 4th. Fourth, moving over to Charlotte Tilbury. We have from now till July 17th, up to 40% off. Makeup Forever is July sales going on through July 4th with 15% off purchases of $50 or more or 20% off of purchases of $80 or more. We have Armani Beauty, 25% off site-wide using code GLOWREADY. ColourPop, 30% off summer splash sale going on now. Say Friends and Family Summer Sale, 20% off site-wide plus free brow butter if you order $50 or more, and then a 40% off exclusive offer at Pat McGrath's website. And that, my friend, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching, and thank you, as always, to our What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. Thank you so much for all of your submissions this week. I appreciate you so, so much. And, of course, thank you to Semper for sponsoring this video. Love me some freaking Semper. <laughs> 
And thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Our live chat today is going to be at 5 p.m. Eastern time. We're gonna be hanging out, talking about makeup. Hopefully you can join us. If you can't, it's no problem. If you're subscribed, should be in your subscription feed. Very easy to find. If you're not subscribed, go to my channel page, click on my videos, click on the video titled live chat. It is under the live tab and you can join us on the replay and participate in the comment section down below. But if you would like to hang out just a little bit longer right now, YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you right over here to watch, including last week's episode of What's Up In Makeup. It's down there. YouTube should be recommending the top one for you based on your viewing history. But if you do need to go, I'll get it. You got stuff to do. It is no problem at all. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. And mad love to you. I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye.